here we go. In this video, I'm going to discuss the three methods for testing ketones, my favorite method for testing ketones, and how do you measure for fat loss? We're going to discuss the role of glucose and how ketones actually help increase the metabolic rate. And we're going to, we're going to discuss something called postprandial glucose. So welcome for those who are tuning in. You're going to want to make sure you write down these metrics, especially as I give it to you towards the end of the video here. I'm live with you from Keto Camp HQ. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of Keto Flex and the founder of Keto Camp, and I'm super excited to be with you today, dive deep into today's topic. So welcome for those who are here. Thank you for joining me today. Let's get into the conversation. So when we think about why keto, why do we have to even use keto for fat loss? When you're in a state of ketosis, it is far more superior to burning fat, body fat, than when you're a sugar burner eating a high carbohydrate diet. So when we study the electron transport chain, that's how your cells and your mitochondria produce energy, we know that a molecule of glucose, meaning you're burning sugar, not fat, a molecule of glucose gets you about 32 to 36 ATP units. ATP is the energy, the gasoline, that your mitochondria produce. It's very important for energy, fat loss, longevity, health in general. Let's compare that to somebody who's in a state of ketosis. They're getting about 400% um, more energy. 120 to 160 ATP units are being produced when somebody's in ketosis versus somebody who's not in ketosis. Now, this is very important because you're going to experience more energy, especially in the brain because you're going to experience mental clarity, creativity, peak focus, because the brain has a lot of mitochondria. But in the perspective of how this helps you actually, why this happens, I should say, what's the mechanism of action here? When you're in a state of ketosis, those ketones are talking, they're communicating to your mitochondria. And they're telling your mitochondria to create more. This is called mitochondrial, mitochondrial, excuse me, biogenesis, mitogenesis. With that increased production of mitochondria and ATP, your basal metabolic rate increases. So naturally, your body is going to burn more calories, more body fat throughout the 24-hour period without having to do anything else. But there is a way to measure those ketones because there are different levels that do different things in the body. So how do you measure ketones? It's one of the most popular questions I get asked all the time. And we're going to discuss the three different methods. Before we get to that, it's important to understand that there are three different methods for testing ketones because there are three different types of ketone bodies. Makes sense. And in a nutshell, how this works, if you're not familiar with ketosis, you, drink, you drop your carbohydrates low enough, typically under 50 grams per day, to drop glucose and insulin in the body. So your body now switches over. You have this metabolic switch and flip to burning body fat. Those fatty acids are then sent to your liver. Your liver receives them. And then what happens is your liver produces ketones. It produces acetone, which you would measure in breath ketone meters. It measures beta hydroxybutyrate, which you would measure in blood ketone meters. And it measures, it measures acetoacetate, which you would measure in urine strips. So out of those three methods, let's discuss which ones are good, which ones are not good. Good to see you, Sean. It was awesome seeing you yesterday. Love you, love you too, brother. So the three different methods are going to be a keto mojo finger prick, urine strips, and breath meters. Out of these three methods, I do not like the urine strips. And let me explain why. If you're new to keto and just doing it for the first few days, urine strips could be fine. Great way to measure ketones in the body. But after a few days, and as your cells and mitochondria and metabolism become more efficient when using those ketones, guess what? Those ketone bodies, the acetoacetate, it's not necessarily going to spill out in the urine, giving you a false reading. And you might think, damn, I'm doing everything right. I'm not in ketosis. My urine strips are sh showing not in ketosis. That could probably be very inaccurate because it's a good thing when your body is using those ketones, it won't spill out in the urine. And that's a good thing. So that we eliminate. Urine strips, we eliminate. I know they're the cheapest one out there, the cheapest ways to test, but they're not the most efficient and they're not the most accurate. That brings us to the second method, which is breath ketone meters looking at acetone that it is, it's excreted in the breath. For many, many years, these breath ketone monitors were hit or miss. Some were wonky, some were okay. 
There is one on the market that I like, I use, I teach, I promote. That's called Biosense. And if you go to mybiosense.com, you can learn more about them. We have a coupon code for them as well, which is uh, Keto Camp at checkout for them. But with that being said, I, I do believe the best way to test ketones, the gold standard is going to be looking at beta hydroxybutyrate. And you test that with blood ketone meters. We use Keto Mojo with my Keto Camp Academy students. And I love Keto Mojo because it's very accurate, but also you could test glucose. And we're going to discuss why that is important to test. First things first, we don't chase ketones here at Keto Camp. We chase results. But there are certain ranges we do want to hit. The goal is not the most amount of ketones. There's a certain range we want to hit. I'm going to go over that. But as a general rule of thumb, if your Keto Mojo is showing 0.5 or higher, you're in ketosis. You're in a state of ketosis. That's looking at BHB. And that should happen within seven days after doing a ketogenic diet or approach. If you want to get the Keto Mojo, by the way, I put a link for it on the YouTube channel notes, but it's ketocampmachine.com. And we have a coupon code with them, which is Keto Camp. But let's discuss. Oh, and if you're not in America, you can't get Keto Mojo. If you're in Canada, you want to get a Forest a Fora 6 device. So I want to make sure I don't forget about you Canadians. It's called Fora 6. It tests ketones and glucose. So here are the optimal ranges. I want you to write these down. If you're watching on YouTube, you see the presentation slides. But if you're watching on TikTok and Instagram, you don't see it. So I'm going to explain it so you can write it down. Make sure you grab a pen and paper. The optimal ranges for blood glucose when you're in a fasted state, meaning you haven't eaten any food yet, is going to be 70 to 90 milligrams per deciliter. So when you put your blood on that little glucose strip and put it into the Keto Mojo machine and it gives you a reading, we want to be between 70 and 90 when you're in a fasted state. For ketones, a good general sweet spot for you to feel really good is somewhere between 0.8 and 3.0 millimoles per liter. And that's what the Keto Mojo is going to give to you. I also like doing these advanced testing with my students in, at the Keto Camp Academy. You want to look at postprandial glucose. Postprandial means after eating. So an hour after eating, your ketones should be in that same range, 0.8 to 3.0, somewhere between there. And your glucose should not increase over 120 milligrams per deciliters an hour after eating. Two hours after eating, ketones should be in that same range, and glucose should drop below 100, even better, closer to where it was before you ate that food. Those are important metrics to track as well, because the higher that postprandial glucose spike, the more fat you're going to store. It's going to be hard to burn belly fat and to lose some weight. Uh, this is cut off here, but here are the optimal ranges for fat burning on ketosis. I would say achieving 1.5 to 3.0 millimoles per liter is considered a fat burning state. You are crushing fat cells and ramping up ketone production. So if you hit that metric, if you test your keto mojo and it's somewhere between 1.5 and 3.0, you are going to be in a fat burning state. That would be the optimal fat burning range for checking ketones. If you're having trouble getting those ketones up, there's a few things you can do. You can incorporate some coffee in the morning. You can incorporate some MCT oil, especially caprylic acid. You can incorporate some fasted cardio. These are ways to get ketones produced even more. So if you're having trouble, I do recommend doing that. But I want to talk about this. If you see a glucose number that goes over 140 milligrams per deciliters, that is damaging the blood vessels. We never want to see a glucose spike over 140 milligrams per deciliter. So keep that in mind. Let's discuss some postprandial glucose tips because one of the most important things that I mentioned is looking at your blood sugars after eating a meal. And if you see higher than normal blood sugar levels an hour, two hours after eating a meal, there's a few things you can do. And these tips are going to help you accelerate ketone production and also enhance fat oxidation. The first tip is going to be utilizing berberine. Berberine acts very similar to metformin. I'm going to show you some studies here, but berberine activates an important enzyme called AMPK, and this enzyme regulates your metabolism. Now, I do not recommend taking berberine every single day, but for seven days or on-off cycles of it from time to time as you regulate your postprandial glucose, I do see the benefit of doing that. And here's a study. Let me make this bigger for you. This study was looking at berberine and it's more biologically available deri derivative dihydroberberine, which is my favorite version of berberine. 
and how it inhibits mitochondrial respiration through the complex one, a mechanism for action for berberin to activate AMPK, which is uh, activated protein kinase and improve insulin action. And here's what they found. Berberine activates AMP protein, well, activated protein kinase, AMPK, and improves insulin sensitivity in rodent models in, of insulin resistance. This study, looking at the efficacy of berberine in type 2 diabetic patients, said that berberine is a potent oral hypoglycemic agent with modest effect on lipid metabolism. It is safe and the cost of treatment by berberine is very low. It may serve as a new drug candidate in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. So they're looking at berberine as a substitute for metformin. Metformin has side effects. It costs more money. This acts very similar to metformin. So I put a link on the YouTube video here in the description below of the dihydroberberine that I use. Now, what is dihydroberberine? There's regular berberine that your body needs to, your, your, body needs to convert to the activated form of the berberine. And then there's dihydroberberine, which is already the activated form of the berberine. It's more bioavailable, more effective. And some people might experience some stomach distress when they consume berberine, but dihydroberberine is a little bit better on their stomach. The next tip is apple cider vinegar. You can take it in capsule for version. That's what I do, or you could drink it. But apple cider vinegar is terrific. Here's a study showing that vinegar improves insulin sensitivity to a high carbohydrate meal in subjects with insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes. Here's what the study found. Compared to placebo, vinegar ingested raised whole body insulin sensitivity during the 60-minute post-meal interval in insulin resistant subjects by 34% and slightly improve this parameter in subjects with type 2 diabetes by 19%. Postprandial fluxes in insulin were significantly reduced by vinegar in control subjects, and postprandial fluxes in both glucose and insulin were significantly reduced in hot and insulin resistant subjects. So these are it's showing you that the subjects who took vinegar had a 34% improvement in their glucose after eating a meal versus the subjects who did not. I personally use the product from Paleo Valley and I have a coupon code with them and I put it down below in the YouTube notes as well. The third way to reduce postprandial glucose is a free tip and that's gonna be walking after your meals. 10, 20, 30 minute walk after your meal. This study in uh, Nutrients, <clears throat> MDPI, showed that the timing of activity after eating affects glycemic response of healthy adults, a randomized controlled trial. Our findings suggest that the timing of light physical activity shortly after eating affects the time course of postprandial blood glucose. Activity initiated at the blood glucose peak may acutely lower blood glucose levels to a greater extent than the same amount of activity undertaken before the peak. These results support the activity, that activity, even for 10 minutes at very low intensity, may assist in the management of postprandial glucose if undertaken when glucose is high. So simply going for a 10-minute walk after a meal is going to help with postprandial glucose. There you have it. Those are the three ways to test how to gauge if you're burning fat and how to optimize postprandial glucose. Now, I want to take some time to answer some questions here since we are live. Any substitute for ACV, I'm allergic to it, says Nancy. Yes, you can try chromium piclinate. You can try certain amino acids. And you could try um, bitter melon extract. Those are, act very similar. And also berberine as well. Luis from Brazil. I stopped going. I, my weight stopped going down, but I'm doing everything right. Suggestions, two meals a day since April. I would explore sleep. Make sure your sleep is optimized do some strength training, and maybe mix up your fasting schedule a little bit. And don't focus too much on the scale, but body fat percentage would be a good measurement as well. Kathy Camps had a question. What happens when you have high carb slash sugar as your second meal after your 36-hour fast? It's better to have it as your second meal than your first meal after that fast, but you're probably going to notice a big glucose spike. So I would, I would check the glucose and see what it does. Hey, Miguel, good to see you. Hey there, I've been taking exogenous ketones and I haven't seen an increase in my ketones when I measure them. 
with my keto mojo. Miguel, which one are you taking and how much are you, of the ketones are you taking? Because you should see an immediate increase in your ketones. So I'm wondering if you're not drinking enough of those exogenous ketones. Is berberin safe during pregnancy? I'm not sure. That's a question to ask your, your, uh, your doctor. I'm not sure. And congratulations, by the way. It's awesome. When testing ketones, is it fine to have high ketones if your sugar is at a healthy level? During my fast, my ketones have been above 8.0, but my sugar is around 60. How deep in the fast are you getting those ketone levels? I would say the, the range of ketones that becomes problematic is going to be up around 15 millimoles per liter. Uh, eight is not there yet, but around 15 is when you get into ketoacidosis. Longer fast, you'll see higher ketones like 8.0, et cetera. The more keto adapted you get, you'll see less ketones. And that's not a bad thing because your body's actually using them. 36 hours. Yeah, you, I, I suspect the more you do that, the less ketones you'll see. But I always ask the person, how do you feel? If you see your glucose drop and ketones are high like that, how do you feel? And if the person feels fine, I tell them to keep going. So in terms of the recommendation of the dosage for berberine, you're going to want to experiment. Some people need a little bit more. Some people little bit, need a little bit less but, less. but the one that I use, I put a link for it down below in this YouTube video. Uh, and it has 200 milligrams of dihydroberberine. So I would start with that, just one capsule. And then test if you need one or two capsules. 16 hours fasted. And 1.5 hours after I woke up, zero carb diet for six months. My keto mojo said not in ketosis, blood glucose, ketones, blood glucose, 94 ketones, 0.5. No idea why after 16 hours, dinner was steak and water. Cat can, you need some keto flex days to change things up. <clears throat> Once you incorporate some keto flex days, it'll remind the body that it's not in a starvation state. It'll remind the body to actually burn sugar for some time, then go back into ketosis. And you should see some better numbers there. But I mean, 94 glucose and 0.5 ketones are not bad. But having some keto flex days and going shifting back into what you're doing, you'll see a good change there. What do you think about coconut oil and black coffee while fasting? Totally fine. You might want to look at your blood glucose and see what happens after 45 minutes of drinking it. Some people might see a spike. Some people might not. But it sounds fine to me. What about apple cider vinegar in my water during a fast? That is fine. Does not break your fast. That's a good idea. Oh, you're in Miramar, Florida, Kathy. I am in North Miami. I'm not too far from you. Hey, Dan in Atlanta. Good to see you, my friend. Hey, Julie, Trina. We got Texas in the house. Long Beach, California. We have Monica in the Bahamas. Hello. Let me see some more questions here on Instagram. Yeah, apple cider vinegar gummies, are. I wouldn't use them. They are not... They don't have enough apple cider vinegar to be effective, and they have usually preservatives and sugar. I would avoid those. Chicago in the house. What's up, Daisy? I'm just scrolling up on Instagram to see if I missed any questions here. Yep. Thank you, Alina, for the recap. Appreciate you. I've never taken that one, that brand, uh, Miguel, Nutriana. The exogenous ketones that I use, um, a few of them, HVMN, Ketone IQ, and Kinetic are the two that I use right now. Kinetic, those, you should see an increase in ketones right after you drink them 20 minutes, 30 minutes after. Will nutritional yeast capsules break my fast? Let me look at the nutritional yeast. Um, nutrition facts. Let's see. Nutritional yeast has three grams of carbs, five grams of protein. Yeah, it's probably going to break a fast. It's not going to knock you out of ketosis, but I would, I would consume that with during your eating window. I'm 55 and I've been doing 36 hour alternate day fasting, getting results, way to kick off the weight loss. Good job, Kathy. That's awesome. That's, that's commitment right there.
apple cider vinegar before the meal. You could just do it. Um, you could do it before every meal, but I would do it at least once before your biggest meal. Either three capsules of the Paleo Valley one or two tablespoons, one to two tablespoons of the, the liquid. What protein replacement shake do you recommend? Jennifer, I like the one from Health Code called, um, uh, it's called Health Code, uh, Keto Replacement Shake. So if you go to ketocampshake.com, uh, you can check them out. We have a coupon code with them, which is also Keto Camp. They're great, high quality formulated by Dr. Ben Bickman. I like them a lot. I'm going to answer a few more questions here. Melatonin supplement, which one do you recommend? The best one is a suppository by Dr. John Laurence. If you go to mitozen.com, he has one called Sandman. If you don't want to take a suppository, he also has a liposomal one as well. No Dakota in the house. You got this, Kathy. Thank you for sharing all your wonderful wisdom, Ben. You've made such an impact in my health journey. Thank you, LCD. I appreciate that. Should you take apple cider vinegar? Um, or just before or after meals? How much? Before? If you're taking the liquid, one to two tablespoons. If you're taking the capsules from Paleo Valley, three capsules before, right before. About 30 minutes before, but you could also do it right before. Yeah, they're awesome. I like health code. Portugal in the house. Hello. Good to see you as well. Supplements for candida. You know, carnivore is great for candida and a, and a true heavy metals detox is good. It's, I wouldn't just, there's not really like a supplement. That's, I could tell you, take this and your candida will go away. But if candida feeds off of sugar, carbs, and heavy metals. So keto, carnivore, fasting. Maybe taking some binders, but doing a real detox could help too. What do you think about Atkins protein drink from breaking my fast? Uh, let's look them up. Atkins protein shakes. Let's see. I am looking it up on Dr. Google. All right. There's a whole bunch. I'm going to look up. I'm going to look at creamy vanilla. I want to see the nutritional facts, water, milk, protein, isolate, vegetable oil. Ah, and a, there's a whole bunch of ingredients in this. Yeah, not a fan at all. Why do they put canola in their protein shake? Not good. It has inflammatory vegetable oils and artificial ingredients. Not good. Coffee every day, is it possible to create caffeine resistance? Yeah, it is possible to create caffeine resistance. It's always a good idea to take some time off of coffee. I know that, and I rarely do. You know, maybe once or twice a year, I'll do a seven-week break from coffee. Sometimes on a Sunday, I'll just take a break from coffee too. But yeah, I don't recommend coffee every day, and I know that, but still, I have coffee most days myself. I just love my coffee. I actually have it here from this morning, my cup of coffee. And I have Mindy's cup, fast like a girl. Dr. Mindy Pellis, love you. Shout out to you. By the way, me and Mindy, uh, if you don't know Dr. Mindy Pellis, she has a great book called Fast Like a Girl. That's the name of the cup here. But I'm releasing a podcast interview with me and her this Friday. It was an Ask Us Anything podcast we did in person in Austin, Texas a couple months ago. And I'm releasing that on the Keto Camp YouTube channel and the Keto Camp podcast this Friday. It was an incredible conversation. So make sure you... Subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel to listen or watch that interview. Yeah, Atkins, not good. Paleo, good for insulin. Paleo is a step in the right direction. Paleo diet is considered um, low carb, but it's not low carb enough to be in ketosis. So it's a good step from the standard American diet. It's a level up, but I would say the next level would be ketosis, more very low carb diet. I hope this is beneficial. I'm going to be live with you again next Wednesday, same time, same place, 12 p.m. Eastern time. In the meantime, go subscribe to the Keto Camp podcast. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not subscribed yet. Hit the thumbs up for those watching this live video on YouTube, please. It helps the algorithm. So please hit the thumbs up and comment and all that good stuff. I'll be back next Wednesday, same time, same place. We'll talk about a different topic. Stay tuned for Friday's episode with Dr. Mindy Pels. 
Love and appreciate you all. Thanks for spending part of your day with me. I've got vitamin G 